This is a Tenalti demonstration video of the new HD Home Run Quattro 4K. The device you see here is a four tuner device. Two tuners do ATSC 3, all four tuners do ATSC 1. We are here in Phoenix, Arizona with a TV antenna connected. So this is the actual broadcast here in Phoenix. Let's bring up the device web page. See it is the Quattro 4K, the new 108 device ID. We can have a look at the channel lineup. So these were ATSC 1 channels, 5.1, this is ATSC 3, this is a high definition HEVC channel. We have PBS Kids, this is a standard def HEVC. Scroll down, you have Univision and KFPH, both high def HEVC. We run and run comfort GUI. Start live TV. As you can see it's playing channel 5.1 on physical channel 35. And it's doing, it's actually hitting as high as six megabits per second here. It'll be as low as two megabits per second in advertising. Okay, let's have a look at things at a lower level. Bring up a terminal window. Discover the device. Let's do a 30 second recording. So wget http colon slash slash hdhomerun.local port 5004 auto tuner selection virtual channel 5.1. Let's say we want to do a 30 second capture. Say that to test.ts. Okay, so what's happening here? The ATSC3 broadcast at the lowest level is an L1 broadcast. Um, from there, we extract ALP frames. ALP frames carry IPv4. IPv4 carries UDP. UDP carries either route or MMTP, in this case, route. The route packets contain reassemble to. Um, produce dash segments, these are audio segments and video segments, and mp4 containers. The home run unit is taking the mp4 containers, extracting the audio and video, remixing them back together to create a uh, more traditional MPEG-TS format, which should be compatible with most uh, TV apps out there. Now if we run VLC, we can play this transport stream. Open file, test.ts. Codec information. Here you can see it is HEVC, it is 1920 by 1080 and 60 frames per second. Uh, there is no audio playing at the moment because this version of VLC doesn't support the audio codec that's being broadcast here. Okay, uh, so that's for a traditional app for um, a ATSC3 specific app that does MPEG, uh, that does dash format, the HGM run will act as a server. Let's do another trick. Let's say that we want the format to be equal to tar, sorry, dash tar, test.tar. Okay, this is saving a tar archive of all the dash segments, manifest, edit files, everything needed to play the stream. Um, and saving it over what's captured over the year for a 30 second period. Now, if the data is being sent in MMTP format, the home run unit will automatically convert from MMTP into, uh, into Dash. Okay, let's bring up just the window there, test.tar. Okay, here's the tar archive. We have a manifest XML file. You can see a chunk of XML. This is the description uh, for the player to know how to play the dash data. Okay, you can see audio segments. These are MP4 containers. Audio init file, which is the start of the MP4 data. Closed captioning, video. 
these are these are all one and a half to two second length uh, audio and video frames. Okay, so you want to have a look at the actual things at a protocol level. Let's go a bit deeper. Format equals ALP dash PCAP. Now you'll recognize PCAP from TCP dump or Wireshark. Uh, it's the packet format used to save um, for doing a, a capture on a, on a network. So a traditional network would be Ethernet that carries um, IPv4. Here we have ALP carrying IPv4. Okay. And Wireshark. Okay, you'll see a lot of UDP packets. If you look at the network stack, you can see ATSC link layer protocol. Uh, this is the shortest form of uh, this protocol being a two byte header, simply saying it's carrying an IPv4 packet. IPv4 uh, destination IP address is a multicast IP address that's carrying UDP, and then the data, this can either be MMTP or it can be route. Um, if you have a look at, you can see all of these packets, they're near max length packets. These are the audio and video packets. Um, you'll see 239.255, that's the prefix that's common to all audio video packets on ATSC3. 35 is the physical channel number. And then .41, .42, these are the subchannels. Scroll down. Obviously most of the data will be audio video data is the other magic one 2240-2360. so this is the stream information this tells you what subprograms are present the name of the channels the virtual channel number what data format it's in what type of service it is is it an audio video stream that kind of thing um, the data here is actually gzip compressed so you can't immediately see it in the packet capture uh, you have to gunzip this data You'll also see ALP frames. This one here is a signaling packet. Specifically, it's a link mapping table. Uh, this version of Wireshark is, uh, is available from GitHub from the, if just search for Silicon Dust. We're working on getting it submitted upstream. Um, if you want to run a, um, any other kind of app, there's the next trick. You can ask for an IPv4 PCAP. So this is designed for maximum compatibility. This is essentially the same thing, but everything at a IPv4 level rather than at a ALP level. Um, so you miss out on the link layer signaling, which isn't all that interesting. What you get is all the audio video data and stream information uh, at the IP level. So this should work in TCP dump and whatever your favorite um, packet viewing program is. There we go. Run Wireshark again. Open PV4. So you can see this is exactly the same as what we saw before. The difference is it starts at the IPv4 layer rather than starting at the ALP layer. So uh, optimum for compatibility with other apps that don't yet understand ALP. So this is the crash course in uh, and demo of the new HG Hammer on Quattro 4K. Um, thanks for watching.